Hello and welcome once again to another week here at the well as we have another message for you. Uh, it's great to be sharing with you and hopefully we'll be back again meeting in person in the church, which is what we really want. But until then, uh, we're just going to continue to put out our messages electronically and I hope that uh, they're fulfilling for you. If it's your first time here and you don't know much about our church, we invite you to check out our uh, Facebook page or our website and learn a little bit more about us. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy the service today. Uh, we have a special treat for you. Uh, those who have been watching regular know we've had a special clips for the family the last couple of weeks. Well, we got a little something different this, this week. We have uh, Tom who is reading uh, to, uh, to you a Bible story that is designed for children. So if your children aren't with you, put this on pause if you have to and gather them in together and let's have a story time together. Hello, everyone. Here's a short story from the Bible storybook entitled Daniel in the Lion's Den. The Israelites finally escaped from Egypt, but many years later, they were again made slaves, this time by the Babylonian kings. And one of the Israelites who still trusted God was Daniel. Daniel was so honest and clever that the king, Darius, made him prime minister. All other politicians were jealous. They made Darius pass a law saying no one should pray to anyone but the king. Anyone who did would be thrown into a pit with hungry lions. But Daniel went on praying to God the way he always had. Everyone could see him. Daniel prays to God, said the jealous politicians to Darius. He has broken your law. You must throw him to the lions. Darius was sad, for he liked Daniel, but the law was the law. He ordered Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. The next morning, the king went sadly to the lion's den, not daring to even hope that Daniel had been saved. Daniel, he shouted, has your God kept you safe from the lions? Emerging, here I am, said Daniel. God's angel stood between me and the lions. The king ordered Daniel to be taken out of the pit. He had the politicians thrown in instead, and the lions made short work of them, munching on their bones. Then Darius ordered all the people in his kingdom to respect Daniel's God. The end. All right, I hope you enjoyed that story. We try and uh, put a little something in each week that is for the family, including the children, so I hope you did enjoy it. But for now, we're going to return to our series that we've been doing called The Path, which is a study in Proverbs. And we're in the third week this week. Uh, in the first week, we talked about your direction, not your intention, determines your destination. And we know that uh, we need to look long term and avoid distractions and detours. But oftentimes, uh, we, we get on a path and we suddenly realize we're going in the wrong direction. This is not going to take us to where we want to be. And that's what we talked about last week was making course corrections. Because not being perfect, sometimes we get us off that desired path. We must monitor our course and take the corrective actions when necessary. Of course, we understand we have the tendency to get off course. Maybe we could make better decisions and avoid a whole lot of trouble if we knew why. So that's what we're going to look at this week, a little bit of why it is that we get off course so easy. So check out this intro clip as we examine why we often get off course.
Okay, the title for this week's message is Your Heart Matters. Well, what, what do I mean by your heart? I'm not just talking about that organ that's pumping blood through your body. We know that that's the definition of the physical heart. But there's a lot of other things that we can look at the heart. The heart's our intuition. It's our emotions. It's our feeling. It's that urging to do something. That overwhelming compulsion that you just have to do something. That feeling you have that something is going to bring you happiness and joy. How many times have you said to somebody or heard somebody say, just go with what your heart is telling you or follow your heart. Those are the decisions we're talking about. That thing where you've got that gut feeling deep inside here that says, oh, I just got to do it. That's the right thing for me. I just feel it's right. And you go with that on your instincts. Is that a good idea? Maybe, maybe not. It might be bad advice. The prophet Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Wow, that's confusing. We've been going all along on our instincts, and Jeremiah says that's deceptive, that it may be wrong. How do we know what to trust? Well, let's look and see if we can get God's guidance on this as we continue along in this lesson. But first, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we have together this week. We ask now that you will open up our hearts and our minds to hear from you. We ask that you would guide us through the scriptures, and we ask that you would just give us some insights and be sensitive to your leading so that we know how we can make better decisions. So we ask that you would guide us, and we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Well, let's see where we're going to go from here. Okay, first off, we want to know, why did we find ourselves on the wrong path? That's what we said we wanted to address today, because we want to avoid doing that, because course corrections are painful. Well, there's two main reasons we're looking at this uh, week uh, to head this up. Is one is our heart is on a happiness quest, not a truth quest. Huh? Well, truth is those facts that reign true that if we really thought things out we'd realize what the smart decisions are but you realize that's not usually what we do because we want something else there's that tug of war oh i i i know i should do this but oh i really have been wanting to do this that can uh, we can wrestle with that tug of war in all different areas of our life whether it be spiritually relationally financially <laughs> i think of financially a lot right now there's a lot going on because uh, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, a lot of people are struggling financially right now, but yet we've got stimulus checks coming out from the government. What do we do when that money comes? Our head says, this is for an emergency. We need to prepare properly. Put that money away. Our heart's telling us, uh-uh. You know how long it's been since you had to check that size? This is the perfect chance to get that new big screen TV you wanted. There's all kinds of things that we would like to do. But it's at a smart decision in the long run. And there's that tug of war that's constantly taking place. Our heart always wants to do things, but it's not always the smart thing to do. Our heart chooses the happy now rather than the happy later path. Choices we make are now. The outcomes are later. And that's what we often forget. We forget to look at the long-term uh, consequences of our decisions. The outcomes of our decisions aren't felt until later. Think about it. The path you chose in high school to apply yourself and study hard in order to make good grades or to play hooky and have a good time. Yeah, that's fun. But it impacts your destination in college. It affects your financial future. Whether or not you take the time to buckle down and do the work or whether you're going to try and take shortcuts, you'll reap the harvest later. Um, or how about the path you chose in your 20s as a high school, as a as a single person? Well, that impacts what happens in your 30s when you're married with kids. Or the financial path you choose early on in your marriage to spend or save impacts what happens financially as you face retirement. One thing seems appealing up front, but there's long-term consequences, and that's that constant struggle we're going on. Um, we don't know the outcome, of course, of these decisions till we make it, until it's too late to do anything about it. 
which is why it is crucial for us to make right decisions up front and really think about it and not just rush into things blindly. We make choices today and won't know the effects of those choices for years or decades. There's a delayed re reaction between how about that first cigarette at 15 and emphysema at 50? Or how about having be, uh, between casual sex as a teen and then later realizing you're stuck with physical diseases or marital problems by the time you're 30 because you never learned how to develop good relationships? Or how about, here's a good one, between the habit of investing in an IRA in your 20s and retiring of plenty of money in the bank at 60. And that's where we talk about those long terms. Planning ahead means we might have to sacrifice something now for the long term results. So once again, let's go to Proverbs and examine some of the wisdom that Solomon has left for us on how we should uh, view these uh, decision making processes. Proverbs we find, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. A lot of wisdom in those handful of verses there. Let's see if we can break down the meaning of these verses and go back through them a little at a time and uh, what they're pointing us to. First off, how to get on that straight path. We will be on that proper path to begin with so that we don't have to make those course corrections later or at least minimize those course corrections we're going to have to make. Well, first off, Solomon tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart. This, to me, is a submission versus a control issue. Submission to the one who knows where each path leads as well as where it doesn't lead. Guess what? God can see far further into our future than we can. He's got far more wisdom. He knows what's right for us. And submission to the one that knows what's best for you and what uh, more so than you know what's best for you. And uh, that's the whole thing here. We fight with that fact because we want to maintain control. We've been studying. We've gained all this knowledge and experience or so we think. But everything we know is nothing compared to what God knows. And that's why we have to trust him to help us make all decisions. And then it says, lean not on your own understanding. Well, I just said, we've been doing all this stuff and studying, but lean not on your own experience, your insights, your education. You say, why have I done all this studying and education? I'm not supposed to lean on it. Now, it's not that these things aren't important. You still need to use your head a little bit, but you have to realize that your knowledge is incomplete and fallible. You're still learning. You have to trust on God to guide you. If you tr Once you get to the point where you think you know that much that you can do it on your own, that's when you get, in, get into trouble. Uh, Andy Stanley commented on this. There's a quote from his book. When conventional wisdom conflicts with what you have revealed through scriptures, I'll lean hard into your revelation rather than my understanding. When my emotions are in conflict with your law, I'll lean on your law and harness my emotions. Sometimes we have to be able to submit and take a back seat and uh, trust God on this. And then acknowledge him in all your ways. In all your ways acknowledge him, he will make your paths straight, the scripture tells us. Notice he didn't say in most of your ways. So, uh, Solomon, didn't le Solomon didn't leave any wiggle room here. In all of your ways means your dating ways, your marriage ways, your entertainment ways, your morality ways, your education ways, your professional ways, your financial ways. And he wasn't just speaking your Sunday ways, your religious ways, or your prayer ways. All means all. In every area of life, we need to acknowledge God. So many times we want to go to church or we want to we come to Bible study or we have certain times of the day where we focus on the God and the rest of the time we forget him. And we go out and do things our own way. 
And that's where our life is falling apart. We need to learn to trust him in everything we do. So in order to do this, we have to remember, as uh, the scripture goes on from there, uh, we can pull out three action steps here. One, don't be wise in your own eyes. When we think we're so smart, we've got an ego problem. To me, this is humility. We need to remember that we have a lot more to learn. And we've talked about this before, too, about how the silent person who sits back and listens learns more than those who just want to take control of things and do it them, their own way. And we find, honor God's provisions for you. The scripture says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Well, what does this mean? And here he's talking about the first fruits of your crops because that's what they did back in um, these times uh, when they were farmers and they raised crops or if they had sheep and goats, if they were uh, shepherds, they would give their best to the Lord. And that's where we get, uh, where we tie into the concept of tithing. Normally we're giving money for the tithe, but money isn't the only thing that applies here. If we really value God's opinion, we're going to give to him first. We're going to give him our time. So we're going to spend time with him. We're going to give him our talents. To me, uh, we see that in the church a lot. Serving versus consumerism. A lot of people come to church to have a feel-good moment, and then they leave, and they haven't done anything. When we come to church, it's not just supposed to be for what we can get. It's what we can give. We are supposed to be giving God the best of our time and our talents and our Monday, uh, money. And when we do all that, that's when we get rewarded. And don't blame God for your pain. The scripture says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. How many times have you heard somebody say, I don't understand how a loving God could allow this to happen. Well, generally when things go bad, not always. There are some things we can't explain. I don't like to throw everything in the same boat. But oftentimes when things aren't going right, if you really to analyze it, it wasn't really God because you didn't trust God in your decision making. It results back to poor decisions you've made a lot of times or poor decisions that someone else has made that hasn't put their trust in God. I wonder how well things would go if every person in this world were really to follow God's guidance. I don't think we'd be here anymore because I don't think there'd be a need for him to linger in returning if we were all following his guidance, but the truth is people don't, including ourselves. So you have to ask yourself, am I doing what I'm supposed to? So we each have a choice to make. We will surrender to the will of our Heavenly Father or we will continue to lean on our own wisdom and insight. That's a choice we each have to make because we have free will. God's not going to force us to follow his ways. We have to choose to submit. Will we acknowledge God in all our ways? Or will we pick and choose? Okay, God, you can guide me on this one, but I've already made my decision on that other one. That is a tendency we often have. So we want to avoid that. So I would suggest that you take a few minutes to wrestle with three questions I'm going to give you here. Facing these questions may be difficult, but facing them could result in a revolutionary breakthrough in your life. First off, why do I hesitate to give full access to every part of my life? Why? Why haven't you surrendered everything to him? Do you think God's not powerful enough to help you with those things? Or is it that you think you're so good you don't need his help on that? And why are you keeping that sheltered away from God's help? So why aren't you surrendering? And then, what do I fear will happen on the other side of that decision? What are you afraid of? You afraid of loss of control because you've surrendered your control? Or are you afraid of the uncomfortable changes? Well, I know that God's going to ask me to do such and such, and I'm not going to give it up. Well, people who fully surrender and do what God asks, they usually find great rewards down the line, but they have to do it God's way. For those of you who have been missing our Bible studies on Thursday night, you should be joining us. We just went through a whole bunch of stories this past week 
through a chapter in Crazy Love where we talked about people who have made sacrificial lifestyle changes and the rewards they got from it. And they were tough roads. They went through a lot of poverty. They went through a lot of challenges. They went through a lot of changes in their life. But in the end, you can see the rewards by taking God's path. And then what is the most difficult area of my life to yield control? What are you just holding on so to so strongly that you say, no, I just can't give that up. That's something that I've, I've already got to figure it out or I've got to figure it out myself. I can't ask God to do that because well, I don't want anybody meddling in that part of my life. Do you have an area like that? What are you holding on to and what haven't you turned over to them? Remember, every path has a destination. And direction, not intention, determines destination. Remember, we can have all the good ideas in the world of what we want to do. We can have good intentions, but if we're not going in the right direction, we won't get there. But the most important thing is to have help in figuring out that direction. Divine direction begins with submission. Information is not enough. Insight is not enough. You have to get that divine direction. And on that, you get that through your prayer, through your study, through your talking with wise counsel that people has given you. you. You talk to other people who could give you insights on this. And maybe they don't know much more than you, so you still have to ask God to help you discern the truth in all that. But by talking it over with other people and getting other opinions, oftentimes, if you stop to think about it and let your ego and pride get out of your real way, you realize they're right. That's really what I should be doing. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and always acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. I hope that message had some meaning for you this week. Uh, as we've been reminding you every week, uh, the next steps, but we want you to come back next week. Continued learning is important and our continuing to get together, whether it's in person or online, that's how we support each other and learn. Uh, continue to read from the books of Proverbs. A lot of wisdom in there. And if you take the time and focus on them and see what they're saying, they will help you in your growth. And join a small group, whether you're joining us on our Bible studies. If you haven't joined us in our Bible studies on Thursday night and you're interested uh, in it, uh, contact me to see how you can start getting in. We're doing it on Zoom, and I can get you set up to be in our mailing list if you're not already. You can contact me through going to our website um, or on our Facebook page and send a, a message on there. And the links are listed right below me so that you know where to go. But we would love to hear from you. And so at this time, uh, we're going to close out in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would guide us. We ask that you would examine our hearts and show us what we're holding on to and what we need to release and turn over to you, your control. We know that if we just let go, that you know better than we do and that you will guide us in the right direction. So we ask that you would do that and you would use us and you'll allow us to grow. And we ask that you would use us for your purposes. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Have a good week and we'll look to see you next week.